We want to welcome you to Countdown to Courage. It's Thursday, April the 15th, 2021, and I hope you're having a fantastic day today. It's great to have you on here. And uh, listen, I hope it's uh, I, ho- I hope things are going well. I hope things are going smoothly for you today. Uh, regardless of whether you're watching from home or work or your vehicle or wherever it may be, we welcome you aboard today. It's great to have you. Uh, we're going to keep things a little brief today. And so we're not going to be on here very long at all, but we want to try to, in the time we have, we want to try to make a difference. And and it looks like, at least on my end, we're having just a few uh, a few little glitches. And and so anyway, we're just going to go forward like everything's working, and, and I hope it's reaching out there. And uh, so first of all, go ahead and grab your Bibles. Uh, we're going to look into our Bibles here in just a moment. Uh, in fact, we're going to do a, a, a few shout outs, and then we're just going to jump right into it today without much interruption. So uh, anyway, we're so glad you're part of our Countdown family. We've enjoyed the last few days being at Faith Community Baptist Church in East Bend, North Carolina. Uh, Pastor Poindexter, what a great church, great church family. We had a wonderful meeting. God met with us in a wonderful way, and we thank God for that. With all that said, for all of our Calvary family, you don't even know how excited I am about just being back at Calvary. I mean, there is, there's no place like home. And uh, listen, I was able, I was blessed to preach at a great church, a powerful church this week. But man, I am so excited about being back at Calvary Baptist Church and being back with our Calvary family. And so we're looking forward to a great day on Sunday. Lord willing, I'm going to be there all day. My wife and I, we're going to be there all day and looking forward to being with our church family again. And so anyway, anyway, uh, we welcome you to the broadcast today. Let's see who is aboard quickly, and then we'll get right into it today. Almeida Campbell, good to see you, Almeida. Hope you're having a great day today. Karen Hop, and hello, Miss Karen. Hope you're having a wonderful Thursday. Michelle Hoots is watching today. Michelle, great to see you. Hope you and Lee are, are blessed today. Uh, my beautiful wife is watching. She just came in, and she poked her head in the door right before we went on the air today. And so it's good to have my little redhead with me watching today. Uh, let's see here. Um, Stacy Jarvis. Stacy uh, says, happy Thursday, everybody. And happy Thursday to you, Stacy. Hope you and Krista are, are doing great today. Good to see you. Abel Seats is watching. Abel, good to see you. Hope you're having a, a wonderful Thursday today. Madison Owens. Hello, Madison. Good to see you watching from upstate New York. And I understand there's even a chance y'all may get some snow up there. Uh, And so anyway, Madison, good to see you. Hope you're having a a good day today. Barbara Devaney. Uh, Barbara says, hello, everybody. Been in the hospital for 13 days. And Barbara, I am so sorry to hear that. We did not know that. And I'm sorry that you're having a hard time. And Countdown family, y'all help me pray for Sister Barbara today, and and, uh, Barbara will try to be remembering you in prayer. It's good to have you on Countdown today, Barbara. God bless you. Let's see, um, Rodney Tomlin. Hello, Brother Rodney. Good to see you. Hope you're having a blessed day today. Hope you and Allison are are doing well. Good to see you today. Uh, Let's see, Patsy Bird's on here. Patsy, good to see you. Hope you're having a wonderful day in harmony today. Drusilla Mendoza. Hello, Miss Drusilla. Happy Thursday. Good to see you. Thank you to you and the girls for coming out to the meeting some this week. Good to see you on here, Mr. Drusilla. God bless you. Let's see. Lee Hoots is watching. Lee, good to see you today. And I hope you're having a great day today, my friend. God bless you. Uh, Madison, by the way, Madison said that it's snowing there right now. Wow. Madison. Man, Lord bless y'all. I tell you what, that's crazy. That is crazy how different it can be. But it listen, great to have you today. We're so glad to have you on Countdown. As I said, we're going to keep things very brief today. And so let me go ahead and take us to the split screens. If I could, if you have your Bibles, go ahead and grab your Bibles today. And uh, let's see here. We are talking specifically right now about the importance of Scripture. Now, we're using 2 Timothy chapter number 3, verses 16 and 17. Let's read that together today. If we could, if you have a copy of the Word of God handy, if you don't, no worries, I'll read it for you today. 2 Corinthians 3, verse 16, the Bible says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. Now, 
I want you to notice on your screen, I have a word that is emboldened, underlined, and also I have it in red so it would stand out. And it is the word reproof, reproof. We're going to talk a little bit about, about that word today, the word reproof. And uh, now think about it a little bit. And in fact, let me, let me see if I can put a few things on your screen quickly. We talked about yesterday, we talked about doctrine. The Bible says the word of God is profitable for doctrine. And we said the word doctrine means uh, information or learning. But today we're talking about the word reproof, reproof. And it means, as you can see on the screen there, it means a proof or evidence or conviction. Now, just think about it for a moment. Just look at the word there, reproof, reproof. And so anytime we see that little prefix, R-E, re, well, that tells us something. The, the prefix re, it means again or again and again. And so think about it like this. What the Bible is saying here is this. The Bible is not only profitable for doctrine, but the Bible is profitable for reproof. Uh, to reprove again and again and again. Uh, and specifically, it does that by providing evidence. And it does that. It proves itself by conviction. And I think that's the word probably that we want to focus on today. If you study the word reproof out in the Greek, uh, over and over again, you'll see that common denominator coming up, the word convict, conviction. Uh, and so it, it proves that it is true. It proves what it says by way of conviction, conviction. And so doctrine seems to mean information, but reproof seems to mean persuasion, persuasion. Uh, and, and, and the word of God provides evidence or persuasion, uh, and it does this by convicting power. Now, again, I want you to think about it. Think we're, we're in that, that mindset of proof or evidence. Remember years ago, and I don't know if it's, if it's the case as much today, but remember years ago, there used to be a lot of shows that would come on television. So, so many of those shows nowadays, you can't even hardly watch them, but, but years ago, you could. And there used to be shows that would come on television, and it, was, it, it would feature some brilliant attorney who always was able to, uh, he was always able to prove either guilt or innocence. Whoever he was representing, he was able to prove them innocent. Or if he was the prosecutor, he was able to prove them guilty because he was a, a brilliant, brilliant attorney. And he was able to provide the evidence uh, that they needed. Remember the days of, uh, remember the days of Perry Mason, <laughs> Perry Mason, and uh, boy, I remember that. And some of you probably still love Perry Mason to this day. It still comes on. Uh, the old black and white Perry Mason. And then more recently, Matlock and uh, Andy Griffith as he portrayed a, an attorney on Matlock. And, and they would go to great odds to try to provide evidence to make sure that, that their client was, uh, was, was proven innocent. Well, that's what the Bible is talking about here, that the word of God is so important because number one, it provides doctrine. It provides information. But number two, it provides reproof. Uh, and it, it, it provides evidence that the words of God are right. And it does this by providing evidence, by giving conviction. Uh, by the way, by the way, and it does it by supernatural power. And I, and, I, and I would say this too, that that's exactly why the word of God is so opposed today. That's why the world hates the word of God. That's why uh, they're okay with us pretty much doing anything we want to in the public school, but not the word of God. They don't want us preaching the Bible. They don't want us bringing the Bible a lot of times. Uh, they don't want us really talking about the Bible on television a whole lot. And I'll tell you why. Because the word of God is not just like any other book. The word of God is a supernatural book. And as you read the word of God, it provides supernatural evidence that Jesus really is the son of God, that there is a God, that heaven is real, that, that Jesus provided the way of redemption. Uh, and as you read the word of God, you know what? It doesn't, it doesn't react like any other natural book. The word of God provides conviction and evidence that it is right. Listen to this verse, Romans 10, 17 says it like this. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And you know what I tell our people at Calvary that the word of God is not just an external book. The word of God is an internal book. 
If you read it, you know what's going to happen? It gets on the inside. It gets on the inside. Let me give you some scripture references today, if I could. Bottom portion of your screen there. Jeremiah 31, 33. Listen to what the prophet Jeremiah said. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. <laughs> and I will be their God and they shall be my people. How about uh, Romans Romans 2, verse, uh, verse 14, for when the Gentiles, listen to this, for when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do, do by nature the things contained in the law, these having not the law are a law unto themselves. Verse 15 says it like this, which show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness. And so what's, what's the word of God saying? If you read the word of God, it's going to get inside. It's going to prove over and over again that what God says is really, really true. We could go all day. How about Hebrews chapter 8, verse number 10? For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. And I know this is just repetitive, but, but there's a reason that God puts these verses in there. How about Hebrews 10, 6, uh, 10 16? This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, saith the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds will I write them. Again, the thought being this, that this book is not like any other book. That's why the church is so powerful. That's why that's what, what, why we, what we preach is so powerful. That's why we try to get gospel tracts into the hands of other people. That's why we try to send Bibles around the world because this book is profitable. It's profitable and it's profitable for doctrine, but also it's profitable for reproof because the more you spend time in it, the more evidence, the more it proves itself over and over and over again. Oh, listen, may I ask you a question? Have you spent time in his wonderful love letter today? And if you haven't, make sure before this day is done that you get in the precious word of God. I promise you, there's not another book like this book. And so we thank the Lord for that. Well, listen, we want to uh, we want to put a number on your screen. It's our prayer helpline number, 704-327-5662. If you're watching the broadcast today and you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ is your personal Savior, we want you to be in heaven with us. And we would love to talk to you about how you can know. Someone, someone says, preacher, but you can't know. Oh, sure you can. 1 John 5, 13 promises that we can know that we have eternal life. And so if you don't know Christ as Savior, please call the number, leave a callback number or a way that we can get back in touch with you. And we would love to, to uh, take some time and talk to you about how you can know Christ as Savior. And then if you're watching today and you have a heavy, heavy burden today that's very hard for you to carry, and you would like someone to help you pray, then listen, call this number on your screen, and myself or one of our personal workers will get back with you, and we would love to pray with you. If you have any problem getting through, be sure you reach out by way of Facebook or email, and we would love to pray with you today. And then all of our Countdown family, don't forget, be kind to everyone because everyone's having a tough time. We hope you have the greatest Thursday ever. Countdown family, we love you. Calvary family, we love you. Sister Barbara, we're playing, uh, praying for you. And listen, we hope you have a great rest of the day. God bless and take care.